Well, hi there. My name's Liam Naden, and I want to welcome you to this report in which I want to outline for you five keys to saving your marriage. Now, I guess the real reason you're here is because your marriage is in trouble. And, you know, you're not alone. Uh, we all know the statistics on how many marriages are failing these days. But I think one thing you need to realize first off is that I don't think it's really that surprising that so many marriages are failing. And why is that? Why do I say that? Well, for a number of reasons. But firstly, when you think about society today, society has become incredibly complex. You know, there are so many demands on people. And that impacts directly on our relationships. And if you think, and our marriages, and if you think back to just a few dec decades ago to our parents' or our grandparents' generation, you know, a lot of these complexities and pressures just weren't there. So it really was simpler and easier to put together a, a marriage and make it work successfully. But I think there's another reason, that is, we're actually not taught on how to build a relationship and how to really communicate properly with our partner or our spouse, and how to really create true intimacy. I mean, the education system, it certainly talks about the biological aspects of a relationship, but what about the emotional aspects and the real communication tools that you need to make a relationship work? It, it, they, we, we're just not taught these things. And the real problem is when things go wrong, and we, and we realize we want to fix it and save our relationship, we don't have any tools with which to deal with the problem. We do have tools that are outdated, and that's what I think traditional counseling has become, is, is outdated. They work perfectly well in many ways for our parents and our grandparents' generation, but they're just not designed to deal with the pressures that we, and complexities that we all have today. And the real problem with traditional counseling is what it tends to focus on is dealing with the symptoms rather than the cause of the problem. And if your marriage is falling apart, that is the real problem. All of the symptoms, which are your arguments, you're not communicating, maybe one of you has moved out already, um, those are all just the symptoms. But there's a core reason why your relationship and your marriage is falling apart. And that's what I want to talk about and give you some ideas about in this report. But I also want to give you some good news. And the good news is there's been advances, obviously, in human psychology and understanding the way people think and, and the way we're all wired in our brains. And what that's given us is new tools that we can use to really make relationships work in the 21st century. They're applicable to our modern situation and our modern society. And they can really help us change our behavior because one thing I'm going to make clear to you in this report, it's your behaviors that really determine what's going on in your relationship. You probably already know that anyway, but I'm going to make it a lot clearer and how you can actually change things fundamentally. Now, how I came onto this, well, actually, on a personal level, I'm not one of these people who can say to you, hey, I've been happily married for 35 years to the same person. We've never had an argument. We've got a perfect relationship, and we're falling in love more and more each day. <laughs> okay, I've actually come to this from the opposite angle. I've been through several pretty bad relationships, actually, myself, including a couple of marriages, one a long-term marriage. And, you know, the, the thing was, they, they always started well. I mean, I guess most relationships start well, don't they? But, but after time, things went off the rails, and they ended in tears. And, you know, finally, when I'd, in one relationship, lost absolutely everything, I realized, look, I'm, it's time I really figured this stuff out. What really makes a relationship work? How can you create a relationship where things get better and better all the time? The intimacy and communication improves with time rather than deteriorates. And when things start to go off the rails, how can you deal with that in a way that's not going to be fatal to the marriage or to the relationship? So I really started to study this, and I did this in several ways. Firstly, I've got quite a background and I've done a lot of work in the personal development field and in the areas of, of human performance and, and, and how we get results in our life. So I was able to start to apply some of those ideas to the whole field of marriage and relationships. But the other thing I started to do, and this is something very powerful, is I started to look at other couples who had great relationships. Now, I'm sure you'll agree, 
you know, even though we've talked about and we know how the, the very high percentage of marriages that end in divorce and tears, there's a small percentage of people who have marriages where things do get better and better with time. And you might have seen some of these people, and you know, they're the sort of couples who are all over each other. They might have been together 10 or 20 years, but they're, they seem to be really in love. They hang out with each other. They're still really passionate and intimate, intimate with each other. They laugh, they have fun together, and they're really, really close. So there is a small percentage of people who do have great relationships, and they do get better. So what I started to think about was, and look very closely, was what are those people doing and thinking that is giving them a completely different result to most people who, are, who find their marriage falling apart, or at the very least getting boring and dull and unfulfilling? So I thought, what are those people doing? And I really started to look closely at other people's relationships, these very good relationships, and I started to see some patterns emerge. And most of the people, what they were doing was totally subconscious and unconscious. They weren't really aware of it. But they'd managed to, maybe by luck more than anything else, get the relationship to a place where they were doing the right things and they were thinking the right things that meant their relationship continued to develop. And, you know, if from time to time they went off the rails and things went off track, it wasn't fatal. They could re heal their marriage really quickly, heal any hurt and pain, and get things right back on track again. So what I've done with all of this is I started to then apply it to my own relationship and started to see how could I create some tools here and develop some ideas that would really make my relationship work and not only... Um, be good but get better and better with time and then I started to also help other people with some of these tools and quite honestly the results for me and for others has been quite amazing which is brilliant now I also want to say here these aren't when I talk about tools these aren't difficult things and in fact you know some of the things are quite are remarkably simple and people think well I know that ah but you might know it but you're not actually doing it because the key with some of these things, or with all of these things, is they need a mindset. You need to be thinking about your relationship in a particular way. And in fact, it's not so much about what you're doing, but it's about what you're thinking that's going to create the result in your relationship. So now let's get on to the five keys to saving your marriage, which incorporates some of these tools and ideas. And I realize you're probably here because you're in a lot of pain. Okay, so this isn't about a long-term solution. You want results now, and it's possible to achieve dramatic results quickly without going through the old-school counseling method of, you know, going over your problems and talking it through and trying to fix all of the little things that add up to things just falling apart in your marriage. So the first thing, the first key to saving your marriage is really to focus on what you want rather than focus on your problems. Now, traditional counseling and most people, when they think about fixing or saving their marriage, they think, gosh, I've got all of these problems. How do I solve all the problems? So my wife is walking out the door. How do I stop her walking out the door? We're having an argument. How do I stop the argument? Or how do I avoid the argument starting in the first place? And all of these things, the problem is, if you forgive the overuse of the word problem, is that just by focusing on the problems, you're dealing with the symptoms and not the cause. Now, I'll give you an example here. Imagine you've got a house and you come in one day and there's a crack on the wall. Now, you could do two things. You could look at that crack and say, oh, there's a crack in the wall, it needs fixing. So you go down to the hardware store and you get some plaster and, and paint and what, whatever else you need and you plaster up the crack and you paint over it and it looks like the problem is solved. But the next day you come in and on another wall, there's another crack and this time it's even bigger. So then you do the same thing. You go, oh, okay, there's another problem. I need to solve that. And you, you again, you plaster over the crack, and it all looks, looks fine. And it might be fine for a little while after that. But eventually, you're going to find more and more cracks appearing. And what you're ultimately going to realize, if you've got any intelligence at all, is that you're just dealing with the symptom. The problem is not the crack in the wall. The problem is what's causing the crack in the wall. And that's where you've got to get to the foundation of the house and, and realize that that's probably that the house is falling down. And you're not going to save the house just by plastering up the cracks in the walls. So that's why you've got to stop 
thinking or talking or discussing your problems and start to focus on what you want your relationship to look like rather than trying to fix all the problems. So that's the first way to focus on what you want rather than your problems is to stop trying to solve your problems. Now I know that sounds counterintuitive and you think but you know I've got all these problems and if I could just solve those then everything will be fine. I can save my marriage if I can just solve these things. But the problem with that approach is you'll never solve those things because like the house, like the walls, cracks and things are just going to keep reappearing unless you deal with what's causing the problems in the first place. So the other side of that is to think about what you really want and focus on that. Now most people in every other area of their life, or a lot of people anyway, if they want success they realize they've got to have goals. So they've got to know what they want. So we do this, we, we say, well, what sort of house do we want? What sort of car do we want? What sort of job do we want? How much money do we want to make this year? All of these things we have goals for and we have a clear picture, or relatively clear picture, of what we actually want. But for some reason we don't do this with our relationships and we don't say, what do I really want? What we tend to do is just settle for what's there. So what you need to do is go back and think, what do I really want in my marriage? How do I want it to look? How do I want to feel? How do I want my partner to feel about me? How do we want to relate? What do we want to be doing together? And come up with a clear picture of what you want. So that's the first step, is to focus on what you want and stop focusing on your problems. Okay, now the second step, or the second key, is to commit to putting your marriage first. Now, you know, one of the interesting things I discovered with the couples who have fantastic relationships, that small percentage, is this is one of the things they all do. They all put their relationship ahead of anything else. And can I ask you a question here to think about? Was there a time in your life when your relationship went really well? Now, it prob probably was, and is for most people, when you first got together with your partner. You know, when their relationship was new and you were, you were falling in love with them, you know, weren't things going well? Well, can I ask you then, did you put your relationship first at that time? And the chances are, I'm almost certain to bet that you did. So that's what you need to do again, is you've got to realize that your relationship is the most important thing in your life. It's going to affect your happiness more than anything else, and your unhappiness. So you've got to commit to putting your relationship first. And the funny thing happens here, when you decide to do this, then you're going to notice, not a, if, if you really decide to take responsibility and do this, you're going to find that your behavior is going to change, obviously, but subtly over time your spouse's behavior is also going to change. Because I know what you're probably thinking, oh, well, I can put my relationship first, but my husband or wife isn't, so that's not going to work. Well, yes, it is. If you start to take the action first and you start to put your relationship first, you are going to get a reaction in a positive way from your partner as well. So what does this mean in practice? Well, when I say put it, putting it first, I don't mean you know, you've got to be with your wife or husband 24 hours a day, do nothing without thinking about them, and don't have a life of your own. Of course I don't mean that, because remember the purpose, I believe, of a marriage is actually to make a person more of themselves, not less. Marriage isn't about sacrifice. M marriage is about expansion and making more through through a relationship you can you can become more of who you are that's what's really exciting about it so what this means in practice is don't do anything without considering the impact on your marriage or your relationship first so if you've got a business meeting or if you go you want to go off to golf on a on a weekend just consider those things and the impact it will have on your relationship and send that message to your partner or your spouse that you're, that you're very aware that your relationship is the most important thing. But you're not just saying it, you're actually making it a priority. Now sometimes that might even mean you have to make a sacrifice for your relationship. But I can tell you now, if you make a sacrifice for your relationship, not in a, in a resentful way, but in a very loving and unconditional way, that's one of the major things you can do to rebuild a marriage that's falling apart is to show how, because what you're doing is showing your, your spouse how important they are to you. And again, if you're showing them how important they are to you in the right way, eventually they're going to respond back 
with that feeling as well. And here's another way to put your relationship or your marriage first, and that is to show some appreciation to your spouse. I mean, when was the last time you did that? So just say something to them that shows that you notice they're there, and again, in an unconditional way. Don't, you know, do it with a feeling of resentment, but just genuinely let them know that you appreciate that you have a marriage, that no matter how bad things are at the moment, you actually still appreciate that they're there and that, that, that it is the most important thing to you. So that's a key thing, is to commit in your mind that you're going to put your marriage first above everything else in your life. Okay, the third key is to only put positive energy into your relationship. Now this is such a big thing. And I know, you know, I'm not trying to downplay the problems and the pain that you're facing at the moment. Some of the people I talk to and have helped have had terrible situations that they're dealing with. But what you can do, or, or the, the biggest problem with all of the, um, when you're dealing with all the pain, is you're swamped or bogged down in negativity and negative energy. And whenever you think about your relationship, probably, or your marriage, or your you, you prob it probably gives you feelings of pain. And the problem with that is what tends to happen is that what we focus on, we get more of. So if you're focusing on the pain and the problems, you're inevitably going to get more of those. So the way to do this, you, you can say, well, it's easier said than done. How do I put positive energy into it when things are so bad? Okay, well, there's a couple of practical things you can do. Now the first thing to do is only, if you can, only have um, interaction with your spouse when you're feeling good. Okay. Now this means if you're in a lousy mood or you're depressed or stressed or whatever, go and do something to snap yourself out of that space before you interact with your, with your spouse or your partner. So try and do something that makes you feel good and then interact with your partner. So this is very applicable for men often who've had a hard day at work and they're on their way home and they've got all their problems in their head and they're feeling lousy. What you want to do is just stop. Don't just walk in the door and hope that your spouse is going to make you feel better. No, the key is for you to feel better first and then interact with your spouse in that relationship. So in a nutshell, if you're not feeling good, stay away from your partner and try and put yourself in a good space so that you're only interacting with them when you're feeling good. And on the other side, what you can do, if you are feeling in a great mood, why not communicate with them? You know, send them a text or an email, or, or give them a call. Or if they're in another room, uh, go into the same room with them and say hi. So just be really mindful of your energy and how you're feeling, and realize that you, you want to put as much positive energy as you can, no matter how difficult that might seem, but try and put as much positive energy into your relationship and cut out as much as you can as you can about the negative. And that's one of the reasons we talked about stopping dealing with your problems, which was the first key that I talked about. Okay, key number four is to learn and communicate in your partner's language. Now this is really, I've, I've found this really interesting, is that most people don't actually know how to make their partner feel good. And the problem is, we as human beings, we're quite, we're quite complex, but we all have different ways that we take in information, and we have different ways of seeing the world. And invariably, I find when there's a communication problem with a, a, with a, um, a husband and a wife, what's happening is that one is trying to communicate something to the other, and the other just isn't getting it. And you might have had, I'm sure you would have had this experience maybe many times, where you're trying to... Um, communicate something to them. You might even be trying to tell them that you love them and you might be tr trying to communicate love and appreciation and affection and they're not responding. They might even be pushing you away but they're not giving you the and you're you know this is um, happens all the time the classic line that men say well I told you I love you I married you didn't I so you must know that I love you. So why is it then in that situation the wife isn't feeling loved? Well, with all of this, the reason is that the person is not communicating in the language of the person they're talking to. So you might be talking in your language. You might be feeling loving. You might be wanting to communicate 
love. But if your partner feels love in a different way, then they're just not going to get the message. I'll give you a practical example. Some people really don't like to be touched very much. And it's nothing against um, that they don't find their partner attractive or anything like that, but, but being physically touched is not the primary way that they experience love and affection. Now it can be, that's not to say you sh if you're in a sexless marriage or um, there's no, affection, no physical affection between you, that's good, I'm so, that's bad. And there are certainly ways you can get your partner to respond much more physically to you. But you've got to recognize that not everybody primarily, first off, the first thing, that the most important way of communicating with them is not necessarily physical. It could be in other ways. It could be through the sound of your voice. It could be by looking at them in a certain way. So what you've got to figure out is what your partner, your, your spouse, really responds to, the ways they respond. If it's a touch, if it's a look, if it's something you say. And also what's important to them. People have th different priorities in their life. Some people like just to be quiet and peaceful and, and have a secure life. Other, li other people like to have adventure and fun and be out doing exciting things. So you've got to figure out what's important to your partner and again communicate to them and give them more feelings of what they like. So that's the key number four is to find out what your partner's communication language is and communicate them in that way. And two ways of doing that. One is to see how they respond to different ways you approach them, whether you touch them or whether you talk to them. And the second way is to become much more aware of what their likes and their dislikes are and try to accommodate those and to encourage their likes and discourage their dislikes, if you know, if you know what I mean. Okay, and the last key in many ways sums up the previous four, but I think you'll get it when I talk to you about it, and that is do some of the things in your relationship that you've stopped doing that used to work. Okay, now I mentioned earlier on that I'm sure at the, in the very beginning of your relationship things were probably going wonderfully well. But I'll also bet there were things you were doing then and things you were thinking that you've stopped doing and thinking. And the problem is, we, particularly when our relationship goes from that new phase of discovering and learning about each other and all that excitement and fun, and particularly when we start to build in a life together, you know, all of the other pressures and other things start to, start to pile on, such as children and family and you know, building our career. So we're not just with our partner for the good times, which is what we were early on in the relationship, we're there for the bad times as well. And what tends to happen is we settle, and a lot of the things that we did early on that created the fun and the excitement, we stopped doing. But the other interesting thing that I've discovered is the couples who've got really great relationships, they've found a way to keep doing those things. So, you know, that means spending time together. Now, I'll give you another clue on why this works. If you think about the, the previous four keys that I've given you, firstly, focusing on what you want rather than on your problems, isn't that what you did early on in your relationship? You know, if there are any problems there, you just brush them aside or, you know, any, um, any faults that you saw in your partner, you tended to overlook them. Isn't that what you did? You didn't focus on trying to solve those problems. You just saw everything in a much more optimistic frame of mind. And you focused on what you really wanted, which was to build a great relationship. You also, I'm sure, would have put your, almost certainly, put your relationship first. You scheduled other things around spending time with your partner because it was, it was the most exciting and fun thing you could do was be with them. And I'm sure you're putting lots of positive energy into your relationship. And even though you probably didn't realize it, because there was so much communication going on with your partner, so much positive communication, you were probably communicating in their language without knowing it. Because what tends to happen over time, we stop communicating in every way possible, and we just start to only communicate in our own language because the intensity diminishes. So you were doing all these things early on in your relationship, and they, chances are, were all working. But the problem is, for most people, they just stop doing it. So step number five, which is the real key, I think, is to, is to start to identify some of the things that you used to do that made your relationship great, that you've stopped doing, and try and find ways to do some of those again. You know, there's two little things that you can do today that would make a huge difference that 
for most people I talk to, they've stopped doing this and they've become unaware, A, of how important it is to do it and what an impact it has, and B, that they have actually stopped doing it. They've, they've just forgotten all about it. So these two things are, first thing, show some appreciation for your partner. Now, when, or, and for your relationship. When was the last time you said to them, hey, I'm really glad that you're in my life? Or, and you don't need to do that just by saying it. You could do it in a text or an email or a card. But just show some appreciation. You appreciate them being there. You know, no matter how bad things are, they might have even, even already left you. And your communication might have completely stopped. You might be arguing all the time. But just this one little thing of just breaking the pattern, if you like, and showing a bit of appreciation and saying, look, I know we've got our problems and things are pretty bad and I don't know where it's going to go, but actually I, I, I still really appreciate the fact that you're in my life. Just a simple thing like that. And the other thing you can do is acknowledge them. And, you know, nothing works better in many ways than paying a compliment to somebody. And it can be a compliment on how they look. And this works very well for women. Is to compliment, you know, guys, when was the last time you said to your wife, hey, you look really nice in that, or you look really nice. Or you could also compliment them on something they've done. Well done for doing that. Hey, you did well in that. Hey, that worked well. Things like that. So that's all you need to do. Is just... If you do those two things alone, it's going to make a huge difference. So show some appreciation for them and for your relationship, your marriage, and pay them a compliment. So these are five key things that can really make a huge difference to saving your relationship and your marriage. You know, I think the real key is to realize that saving your marriage is actually about your mindset. It's not so much what you do, it's about what you think and the way you look at things, and, how, and whether you look at things positively or negative, and, and what's really going on in your mind, because I'm sure you'd agree that the situation you're in, no matter how bad it is, it's the result of, of behaviours, certainly from you, and certainly, obviously, as well from your partner. That's created the situation you're in. But what's created the behaviours? What's behind the behaviours? Why have you done the things you've done? You know, here you've got to take responsibility and not blame your, your spouse for, for where you are. You've got to take responsibility yourself and say, what have I done? How have I behaved to get us to where we are? And then ask yourself, why have I behaved like that? Well, the reason you've behaved like that is because of your mindset, your thoughts, your beliefs, the way you're looking at things. And that's determined what's happened. So if you can switch that around, and, and these five key things are all about helping you do that, about changing your mindset. If you can do that, you don't need to deal with the individual problems. You're going to find things are going to shift in the right direction. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Apply some of this. I'm sure it's going to make a big difference to helping you get your marriage back, back on track, and to where you really want it to be, which is a, a relationship of fulfillment and true happiness and joy. Bye for now.